All right, welcome back to The Daily Brief. Where we have been covering a couple of topics. We've been going to live events as well and bringing to you the latest from the respective counties right here. So, Samuel, what do we have next? Right about now, we've got politicians from uh, Narok and they are commenting on the ongoing planned or the planned Mao evictions. Let's cross over and listen into what they're saying. This one now is too much. So... Uh, we are petitioning them that to keep off Mao forest. Give the government a break to do the work. Thank you. Um, about the the, the remote forest uh, fiction. As leaders of Naro County, jointly, we jointly and collectively, and on behalf of the people of Naro, uh, make a statement as follows: that we reaffirm our support to the uh, to forest conservation and to stand to defend the Maasai Mao at all cost. That we strongly rally our people uh, to support and, and uh, cooperate with Honorable Kiria Kotobiko. As, the uh, as he executes the mandate assigned to him by the President of Kenya. That uh, we condemn with the strongest uh, words uh, possible the politicization of the Mao issue by, this, by a section of leaders who are not a resident of Narok uh, County and whose interest is yet to, is yet to be known. Particularly these... Uh, these uh, Particularly, uh, this, uh, this discourse, one Senator Kipchumba, uh, Kipchumba Murkomen, whose alteraces and approach to the more issue depicts a present day scoffer. His imprudent and injurious remarks to the illegal settlers in Mao Forest and uh, in subnative instruction to His Excellency Uhuru Kenyatta to compel him to speak on the issues of Mao Forest only portray him as an enemy by, by treasury. It is our humble calling to the settlers to get out of the forest in good faith and avoid the cannibal advice of their own. Let them refer to the Bible in the book of Psalms 1-1 that says, How blessed, how blessed is, a, is a man who does not walk in the path of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of uh, sinners, nor sit in the seats of scoffers. The Mao forest is a, is, a, is a gazetted forest held in trust by government on behalf of the people of Narok. It, uh, its management is carried out uh, pursuant to the law of Kenya with the constitution of, uh, of Kenya 2010, taking the first precedence. Therefore, maintains the Ministry of the Environment and Forestry to lead in the restoration and management of the Mao, uh, uh, the Mao forest, irrespective of the person in charge. Na kwa hile ambaye tunaongea juu ya, 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 ya mashule ambaye yako katika msitu. Ni vizuri tuseme hapa kinagaubaga. Ya kuamba kama watu wanasema hii ni mashule ya halali. Lete, wacha hawa watoe hizo, sika, sika, uh, I mean, those registration certificates. Ambaso, sinaonesha ya kwamba hiyo shule imeukwa huko na serikali. Na kama hakuna, hakuna haja ya kujadiliana mambo ambaye hakuna pali. Na hii suwala la catalite. Tunataka, we also want to challenge. Hii catalite niliyekuwa na kina nani. Kwa sababu kama wenyeji wa huku usishwa. Sasa hiyo ni catalite. Uwezi ya muka tuna kuenda kuweka majani chai pale and you purport ya kwamba hii ni catalite. So we want to say it is the issue of uh, the, the water tower. It is good for all of us. Na hakuna haja ya kujaribu kucheza siyasa eh, hapa na pale. And uh, lastly, tunataka pia kusema ya kwamba. Kama watu wanasema uh, wanaishi katika hii trust land. Na hii na wakuna ukweli ya kwamba hii trust land wako pale kialali. Kwa nini basi wasilete kama ni iso titled it. Waende kwa wale ambayo walipatia mashamba. Rather than destroying an ecosystem ambaye ni muhimu. Sio tu kwa sisi naro. Lakini kwa dunia yote, kwa sababu tunajua umuhimu ya environment. Kwa hivyo, kama viongozi wa narok, tunasimama 
kidete tukisema ya kwamba siasa ipelekwe mbali na tucheze ile maisha ambaye ni muhimu hata kwa generation ya kesho asandeni Yes. Um, so. Good morning, everybody. Uh, nataka ku support wale wase ambayo umesungumza mbele yangu. Kwanza mheshimiwa ambaye ameongea hapa na ameongea mambo mengi ambaye ina inatakiwa serikali wachukulie maanani jambo la kwanza tuna support serikali ya Kenya under the leadership of Uhuru Kenyatta na tuna support CS Keriako Tobiko we know that the initiative of a fiction in the mao is legal and very timely. Kwa sababu hii jambo la mao tumesungumza kwa miaka na mikaka. We have been talking about the mao for the last 20 years. And it is an opportunity that we thank God so greatly for this very timely time that it is producing very good results for the conservation of Mao. I would like only to say three points which are very important because the members who have spoken have spoken very well and we are in support of the whole statement. Number one, I would like to say that the settlement in the Mao was expedited by five group ranches which are known to us and which are known to the government. The group number one was from Ngoben adjudication section. And that parcel number was number 34, Rayo group ranch, which was originally 26 hectares. It was in the middle of everybody. It was in the middle of the group ranch of Ngoben. It was not adjacent to the Mao forest. But how mysterious it jumped to the forest, <laughs> we would like to be told. Because, and how it expanded itself to produce so many acreages that has emanated from Ngoben to almost Mao, an overflap of more than 9,000 acres, we should be told. Because actually, Rayo was 26 hectares, and anything beyond 26 hectares is an illegality. And there is no government in power. There is no government which is not in power that, they can, that can make an illegality to become legal. So we would like that one to be expedited. The first one, a fiction, was done because of Rayo, and I think 30,000 people cannot live in 26 sectors. Even how miraculous it is for 26,000 people to live in, in, in an area of 26 sectors. Unless there are so many staircases, like America, that is the only time that you can accommodate so many, so a greater number of so many people in one particular area. Number two, in Osokon, which was just a home of two families, a family of Oletio and another family which was living there. It was only 155 hectares. How it jumped to the Mao Forest to produce more than 10,000 acres, nobody knows. So we must be told by Aaron Cheruyot the jump because he knows it himself. Because he's a person who is planting people in the Mao so that he can cause mayhem in Naro. The third group was Anakishomi, which was a home of Indorobo, the Okiek. 
the Solonia family, the Olesena family, and a few other Maasai's. They were given about 1,597 hectares, 0.5, but mis mysteriously, it went an extension of more than 20,000 acres towards the Mao. Is that legal to occupy that area? Now, the, 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 the fourth and almost the last was Angaroni Guru Branch, which was also a home of Okiek people. A home of John Sena, who was living there as a chairman and who had also some friends, uh, mysteriously jumped to produce more than 30,000 acres in the, in the extreme Mao. I would like to tell the government, Sisi Yan was a group of nine Maasai elders, only nine people, but it was only 444 acres. But now, on the ground, it is more than 11,000 acres. Where did it come from? Can land produce? I would like to say two things before I close up. One, I've been hearing Aaron Cheruyo saying the schools which are in the Mao are genuine schools. I would like him to prove me wrong, to, to bring forward the registration numbers of those schools, government registration certificate. And if they are there, then we, 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 we stop the future. <laughs> I would like him to produce those those certificates. And even if they are there, they are illegally possessed and illegally manipulated. Number five, there was a task force, Mao task force, which was started in, 19, in, in, 20, in 2008. I was among the task force members. And we made the recommendation for conservation. We made the recommendation for restitution and we made a, a, a recommendation to the government. For eviction. For eviction. Yes. Huh. This recommendation went to parliament, and the parliament of the then passed it. It went to the cabinet. It remains to be an issue that will be discussed over and over again. Planned Mao evictions they are supposed to take place. Government has taken stand through Cabinet Secretary Kiriako Tobiko. That is, this is not a matter for negotiation. The government will move in and evict those that need to be evicted, so that the government also is able in a position or is in a position to conserve the Mao as a water tower. So we'll definitely see whether there will be reconciliation of what people are saying on the ground mm -hmm. together with uh, what has been government a stand over time. All right, for now, we're taking you to the Milimani Law Courts and just a new development that has come in regarding this particular case of celebrity uh, teenage star known as Wendy Waini and her ex-manager, Joe Mwangi. Of course, uh, Wendy Waini's manager, that's Joseph Mwangi Duta, is arraigned in court and police are seeking custodial orders to detain him at Milimani Law Courts and this is to complete their investigations that are still pending. Now, remember, uh, the suspect is being detained because of offences of forgery and the complainant is Waini's mother, that's Magdalene. Um, the suspect has been the manager of her daughter who is a minor and he's alleged to have forged a letter purported to be authored by Cabinet Secretary Dr. Fred Matiangi and sent through the email address to Waini's mother and this is actually to intimidate her, Samuel. Absolutely. And after Joseph found that the matter had been reported to the police, he started threatening the complainant with unknowing, you know, or with unknown consequences. And that is one of the charges that have right. been leveled against uh, Joe Mwangi. So let's cross over to the courts and listen in to what's happening here. For them to cool down those pictures. We'll handle it. The um, respondent did indicate to me that his pictures are on social media all over. Those accounts are held by DCI. He is praying that he issue an order for them to be paid off. Yes.
I'm done in response. Uh, we are opposed to the release of the accused person on the bond. Then as we have uh, demonstrated before the court, the accused, uh, the respondent, Your Honor, is a flight risk. Yona having abandoned his non-residence and switched off his phones is a clear demonstration that he is a flight risk. And Yona, these are facts that have been admitted by the respondent. Um, Yona, the respondent has argued that uh, he went into hiding because of threats by unknown people. You know, we submit that there is no evidence before this court that the respondent received any such threats. There is no indication that he reported at any police station that he has been threatened by any person. And further, Your Honor, it has not been proved before this court that any of his relatives was attacked. no indication that any person related to him made a report at any police station over any attacks. You know, we therefore submit that for these reasons the respondent is a flight risk. Yona, it has been said before this court that the applicant has all the evidence that they need to charge the accused, the respondent. Yona, we have argued before this court that it is believed that the respondent is working with others who are not before court. Right, of course, that is from Milimani Law Courts, where Joseph Mwangi currently on stand right now, mm -hmm. where he is uh, being charged with uh, allegations of forgery by celebrity star, that is... Um, he forged a letter. He forged a letter. Uh, yes, uh, allegedly written by Fred Matiangi. And uh, once uh, that was discovered that it was a forgery, he threatened the right. mother. Of that is celebrity star Wendy Waini. Exactly. Then, uh, as of now, they still remain to be allegations, and that is why that particular case is in court. And in the course of time, of course, uh, the truth will be unraveled. Now, also happening today, we've got uh, the Rift Valley Institute of Science and Technology being a beehive of activity because 8,000 applicants uh, to, uh, for the internships that have been given by government through the Public Service Commission are currently ongoing and we're now joined by our reporter Kigotho who has a brief for us in terms of what this means uh, and uh, Kigotho how is the exercise so far? Yes, Sam Joroge, it's true. We are coming to you live from uh, Rift Valley Institute of Science and Technology, where the exercise uh, kicked off oh, very well, and it was launched uh, officially today in the early hours uh, of the morning. And uh, 
there were a lot of uh, youth who came uh, to show just exactly how much uh, we have in terms of potential, in terms of youth who have uh, gone to school, who have studied different courses uh, that are still outside outside uh, there. They are still uh, outside there. Uh, not yet uh, absorbed by any company or any institution. And this uh, in, uh, in, initiative by the government has uh, given them another uh, life so that they can be able maybe to get to gain experience and also to, to use what they to, to, uh, to use what they, they went to school to study uh, in terms of giving back to the society and, not, and also uh, earning something small and also earning experience that is so much needed by some private sectors and parasites status and joining me now are some of the interviewees who came to seek their chance and also to maybe uh, try their luck in this and maybe uh, you can start with your name and maybe tell us what have you studied and are you optimistic that you're going to get this chance okay my name is Kibet Robert I did water and environmental engineering I graduated in 2018 and I'm happy to have been shortlisted and called for this interview for internships Okay, life has been a bit, has not been a bit easy, so I believe if given this chance, because as a young graduate, I have the theoretical knowledge and skills, so I believe this chance will enable us, the youth, to exercise the skills we have and both to ensure that the organization we have been observed to, we boot them and put our efforts for the good progress of those organizations. So we have skills, so we need where to apply them. And that has been a big challenge. Job opportunities has been very scarce. Companies are not willing to... You know, as a graduate, they need experience. So no, we believe these internships will give us the experience we need to go out there with courage and tell the, the employees or the companies with those opportunities that we have the skills, we have the experience, we have done this. So, uh, do, do, do you think uh, that the government is doing the right thing by introducing you to this uh, internship, uh, internship opportunities? Yeah, it is very right. I, I think the government are doing a great work and we really appreciate that. We are thankful for that. Uh, maybe Sam Jaroga can just pick one you the, the who is also here who came maybe to start his, uh, to maybe uh, try his luck. Uh, what is your name and uh, maybe what have you studied and are you optimistic that you are going to be absorbed? Yeah, my name is Daniel. Kiduthia. I'm also a product of Harvest. I was here back from 2010 to 2013. And although I came today, I was willing actually to be part of the interview, although I've come to realize that they have programmed it with uh, their constituencies. So I've been rescheduled for tomorrow. So I'll be here tomorrow for the interview. Although I was not aware about the list, which I've come to realize it is there. Although I'm a bit confused whether I'm part of the, the internship program or whether there is a risk that was already taken. Yes. You have said that you are a product of this institution. Yeah. What did you study and how has been how has life been looking for a job? Yeah, thank you. I did analytical chemistry uh, in Arvist. That is back in, I graduated in 2014. Although life has not been easy. In fact, to work in a company, I've not worked in any company because when you go for the internship, there's no chances of getting the internship. Number two, even getting a, a securing a job has been actually a problem. So instead I did, I did go back to school. I also did another different course. I did journalism and mass communication, which I completed last year. Yeah. Do you think uh, the government of Kenya uh, or the education system of Kenya is favoring some, some courses more than the others? Because I think analytical chemistry is one of the most, uh, the, the most sought after uh, courses yeah. in, in the world. Yeah, thank you. I think this is something that could have been initiated before. Uh, this is not something that should be done right now. It could have been done five, ten years ago. So it's something, or the program is good and should be actually be initiated because many of the youths, immediately they're out of school, they're not securing an opportunity. Yeah. Some Joroge people have eaten books, what we call in uh, our just layman's language, what were mesoma, and they are outside there just looking for an opportunity to, exp to experience what being uh, employed is like, what uh, they can offer to the society. A lot of youth, a lot of people who, are, who have come out 
and they have also experienced the, 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 the love of the government by give, being given an opportunity. Others have uh, studied double courses to, so that they can caution themselves from unemployment. Maybe we'll, we'll be doing this story so that at least we can show uh, the government the way they are, they are being appreciated by these young people. From our, this, uh, from this uh, institution, my name is Kigodo Mwange. I take you back uh, to Sam Jeroge. Thank you so much, Kigotho. I'm very sure by the time it's clocking midday, the mindset uh, sort of shifts.